Cyclin-dependent kinases are a set of enzymes that are essential for multiple cellular processes. And these enzymes are universally dysregulated in human cancer. They're often overactive. There are two families. One group of cyclin-dependent kinases controls the progression between cell cycle phases, between the G1 and S phases, between the S and G2, and the G2 and M phases. And the other family of these enzymes controls cellular uh, transcription. The most mature right now are drugs that are targeting a set of cyclin-dependent kinases known as CDKs 4 and 6. These are uh, parts of the cell cycle family of uh, cyclin-dependent kinases, and they govern the transition from the G1 uh, to the S phase. And in human cancer, uh, CDKs 4 and 6 are almost universally uh, upregulated in their activity. And there are currently three compounds that are in clinical trial. Uh, the first is palbociclib. There's a second called abemocyclib, and a third called uh, robociclib. And all of these uh, compounds are in various stages of clinical uh, development. Palbociclib is currently the most mature, and it has been extensively tested in breast cancer. And in combination with hormonal therapy in estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, it's demonstrated very marked effects. So that the combination of the CDK4 inhibitor with the hormonal therapy looks like it is better than hormonal therapy alone. And that patients go a longer time and before their disease uh, progresses. And for this reason, palbociclib was just recently approved by the FDA for uh, the treatment of estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. However, there are other diseases that look like they are very responsive uh, to CDK4 uh, inhibition. And these include uh, lung cancer, uh, specifically the KRAS mutated variety of lung adenocarcinoma, other subsets of breast cancer, uh, certain sarcomas, such as liposarcoma, and uh, certain lymphomas including mantle cell lymphoma. And in all of these disease types, there's been very promising results, and clinical trials are continuing to move forward. Uh, additionally, it's important to point out that these drugs are being combined uh, with other agents that target signal transduction. So in addition to the combinations with hormonal therapy in breast cancer, there are combinations with MEK inhibitors, uh, PI3 kinase inhibitors, IGF-1R inhibitors, all of these are being studied with some promise. Um, additionally, they're even being mixed with chemotherapy. The CDK4-6 inhibitors have gone fairly smoothly in that these drugs are orally bioavailable. Uh, they're generally well tolerated. Toxicities are, are overall uh, mild. And they've all shown very good pharmacokinetic proper properties, as well as promising pharmacodynamic effects that they hit targets. So uh, for this class of uh, drug, it's been, um, it's been reasonably um, easy to, to develop them. Um, de defining the exact populations of patients who will benefit the most has been, a, um, has been more of uh, the challenge. Um, additionally, uh, what happens when we use a CDK4-6 inhibitor is many patients, the t their tumor will stop growing, um, but we still haven't fully defined patients whose tumors will stop growing briefly and then restart growing despite the drug versus patients whose disease will enter a long-term, what we call senescent response, where there will be long-term clinical benefit. And at the meeting today, we discussed some very active and new research that is trying to distinguish patient populations, some of whom would have a tumor that only G1 arrests and briefly arrests before it starts regrowing, and others will get much longer clinical benefit by having their tumor enter a senescent response.
The last thing with the CDK4-6 inhibitors is that now that we have clinical activity in several disease types, it will be very important to begin to study mechanisms of resistance and how cells are going to overcome uh, these drugs so we can always uh, come up with the next plan. And uh, work in that area is still in its infancy. Uh, the other uh, issue that we discussed at the, uh, at the meeting uh, today were other cyclin-dependent uh, kinases, not only CDK4 and 6, but also CDKs 2 and 1 govern some aspects of cell cycle progression. And we discussed the development of those drugs. Uh, for example, CDK2 inhibitors may be very, very important in tumors that have uh, alterations or amplifications of a gene called cyclin E. And finally, we also discussed uh, CDK inhibitors that don't uh, control necessarily the cell cycle, but control uh, transcription. So transcription is a ve very basic cellular process by which DNA is made into RNA. And one could ask, well, why is that going to be selective for tumor cells if we were to try to uh, target transcriptional processes? But it turns out that CDK7 and 9 are very important at the transcription sites of genes that are very important for maintaining the oncogenic state and for maintaining the status of the transformed state in cancer cells. And when we target CDKs 7 and 9, we can disrupt the transcription and the expression of genes that are very important for maintaining cells in their transformed or malignant state. And we heard today about uh, inhibitors of CDK7, uh, CDK9, also another one called CDK12. And all of these are going to be very, very promising compounds uh, for the future. And so we look forward to their clinical development. Uh, several of these have not yet entered clinical trial, but the preclinical data look very promising. Lastly, we covered one other topic, and that was uh, the target of CDC7. This is not a cyclin-dependent kinase. It's another protein that's involved in DNA replication called CDC7. So it is a uh, cell cycle kinase, uh, just a different uh, family than the cyclin-dependent kinases. And it looks like this particular protein will be very important for the replication of DNA in cancer cells and also very important for the way a DNA is repaired when certain DNA damaging agents are used. And we heard about the development of a very, very promising and potent uh, CDC7 inhibitor that should enter phase one trial uh, later this year. And so overall, some very promising and exciting preclinical data about the future development of these cell cycle kinases. The cell cycle kinases is a field that's been along, around for a long time, and that's because of the universal disruption of these proteins in cancer cells. And it is very rewarding that there are finally drugs that are targeting these kinases, that are showing activity in these patients, that are in cancer patients, and that are tolerable, and that have a promise uh, for um, the treatment of cancer uh, now and in the future.